Al Hafiz al Mizzi said, I have not seen the like of him, nor has he seen the like of himself. I have not seen one more knowledgeable of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger, and what? And more compliant to it than him. The book that we are studying in English is called The Concise Legacy, or in Arabic it is Al Wasiyah al Sugra by Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And as it is our norm, yani before we read from the book, we like to take yani, a little time out to discuss the author of the book, yani the source. And most of us have heard probably, or at least yani even it's logical, that from the people of Sunnah, it is our menhaj, that we don't take knowledge from any and everyone, but rather we are careful who we take knowledge from, because this knowledge is what? It's our deen. It's our deen. And the people of Sunnah, they said, if the knowledge is deen, then everyone must look carefully to whom he's taking his deen from. So normally we talk a little bit about the author of the book that we're going to study, and that's almost, that's going to be very difficult tonight, but inshallah, I mean, we have summarized and summarized and summarized as much as we could until we got it to something reasonable that we can share tonight concerning the author of our book. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the author of this book, his laqab, title that he was known by is Taqiyuddin. Taqiyuddin. And his kunya that he was known by is Abu Al-Abbas. Abu Al-Abbas. And his name is Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. Yani Taqiyuddin Abu Al-Abbas Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim ibn Abdul Salam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. He was born in the year 661 and he died in the year 728. His place of birth is the city of Harran, which is an ancient city, old city, in what was known then as Bilad al-Sham, yani which includes Syria and the surrounding countries like Lebanon and places like that. His family fled to Damascus in the year 667. How old was he then? Yani six years old or so where he immediately began learning at this young age. He completed the Qur'an and learned fiqh and usul from his father. He also studied the famous book of Arabic, language, Sibaway, then tafsir of the Qur'an, inheritance, and so on, all the sciences of Islam. It is mentioned as the young boy, at the age of seven, his father told the Qur'an teacher, every month, <coughs> At the end of the month, if he has memorized the portion that's necessary, give him 40 dinars or something like this, some amount of money. So when the teacher, the father gave the teacher the money and said, give it to him, you give it to him as a reward for memorizing whatever he memorized this month. When the teacher tried to give it to him, he refused to accept it. And the teacher insisted, this is a reward for memorizing the Quran. He told his teacher, by Allah, I swore to Allah that if I memorize his book, I will not take money for it. At how old? Seven years old. Allahumma sta'an. As far as his teaching, he qualified himself for teaching and giving fatawa before he was 20 years old. His father died when he was 21. Shortly after which he took on his father's teaching responsibilities at Dar al-Hadith al-Sukriya in the beginning of the year 683 after the Hijrah. As well as his father's place in the Grand Mosque teaching tafsir of the Qur'an. Yani his father died when he was 21 years old and he became the Shaykh of Dar al-Hadith at 21 years old and teaching in the main masjid tafsir of the Qur'an. Qualified, recognized, no doubt about it. He began gathering and authoring books before the age of 20. 
and continued until the end of his life. It's narrated that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, himself said that he never wrote a book except that it was upon request. Yani based on a question that somebody asked. Yani the answers to the questions became books. As is this book that we are about to begin with. It was yani, a response to a question or to the questions of a man whom himself was a great scholar. The imprisonment of Ibn Taymiyyah. And I mentioned this in our discussion about him for a number of reasons. From amongst those reasons is that no matter yani, what a person's status is in Islam in terms of knowledge, piety, righteousness, ibadah, da'wah, they should always know that they will be tested. Everybody who says they believe has to be tested. Shaykh Al-Sami Taymiyyah was tested by imprisonment time and time again. Even if it was only for a few days or a few weeks or a few months. But he was imprisoned again and again and again though he never committed a crime. It is said that he was imprisoned 21 times. He was imprisoned in the year 726. And that was the last imprisonment. And he stayed in prison until he died. Yani two years, two months and two weeks. May Allah have mercy upon him. Until he died in the year 728. Ibn Taymiyyah's response to these trials was always a positive one which turned these trials and tribulations by the favor of Allah into great opportunities of increasing iman and ilm and amal. His role in prison was, a, was another manifestation of this blessing. And as such as his efforts in educating the prisoners and nurturing them to the extent that the dissemination of knowledge and religion within the prison excelled certain institutions outside of the prison. Naam. It is said that when he entered the prison on one occasion, he found people who were just ordinary people, yani regular people who had committed crimes, who had no interest in deen at all or learning. And those people, when they came out of the prison, they came out as ulama, scholars, real scholars. Yani Sheikh Al-Sam Taymiyyah wrote many books while he was in prison, yani in response to the questions, sometimes the questions that the scholars the scholars in the main cities in the Muslim lands couldn't answer. They sent the questions to the prison. The Shaykh al Taymiyyah to answer their questions. When he was ultimately banned from having any books, papers and pens during the latter stage of his final imprisonment, Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah devoted all of his time to worship and reciting the Quran. He remained in this state for a short period of time until he passed away on the 20th of Dhul Qadah in the year 728. He fell sick for a few days that led to his death. This came as an enormous shock to the people and they turned out in enormous numbers. Historians regard this as one of those rare funerals and they compare it to the funeral of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah. Al-Bazaar says, rahimahullah, once the people had heard of his death, not a single person wanted to remain in Damascus who was able to attend the, the prayer, the funeral prayer. As a result, of the number of people that attended his funeral prayer, the markets, the marketplace in Damascus was closed and all transactions of livelihood were stopped. Yani everything ceased in the city because of the number of people attending his funeral, including governors, heads, scholars, jurists, everyone came out. And there were so many people in front of his janazah and behind it and to the right of it and to the left of it, none but Allah could enumerate them. Then someone shouted out, this is how the janazah of the imams of sunnah are to be. All of this, this is not for the sake of praising a man. No, this is for the sake of understanding the stature, the magnitude of the person who wrote these answers to these questions that we want to reflect upon. To understand who wrote this, what kind of man wrote these answers. So that this small book with just a few words is not taken lightly. I mean, this is a brief outline and I hope that, and if you haven't read the life of Ibn Taymiyyah previously, I hope that what we have mentioned here is sufficient to ignite interest in reading about his life. Indeed, from the biographies of the people, I mean, the scholars of the people of Sunnah, I mean, his biography is one of the most interesting and motivational for anyone who yani, has taken the path of seeking knowledge and who wants to 
yani live by that knowledge to apply it in their lives. And there's a story that his father and family were going out, yani out of the city for a day of relaxation, and they begged him to come, and he refused to go. And when they came back, they told him, we ate and we played and we did this, that and the other. He said, what I did was better. I read this book and I memorized it. <laughs> May Allah have mercy upon him and grant him al-firdaus al-a'la. May Allah cause those after him to benefit from his knowledge. May Allah cause us to benefit from his knowledge.